Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your fourth asynchronous JavaScript tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about JavaScript promises. Alright then, so we saw in the last tutorial that it can be quite tricky to keep on top of managing the order of a lot of asynchronous callbacks. It can lead to messy code and basically just give you a huge headache. So, now what I want to do is introduce JavaScript promises which help us organize these callbacks in a way which is much easier to maintain. So what the hell is a promise then? Well, a promise is just an object which represents an action that hasn't finished yet, but will do at some point down the line. It's essentially just a placeholder for the result of some kind of asynchronous operation, like a HTTP request. So say for example, we make a HTTP request for some data. As soon as that asynchronous request is made, it returns a promise object straight away before the data is retrieved and brought back to us. Now, within that promise object, we can register callbacks, which will run when the request completes, right? So, promises are actually a pretty new feature that we can use via the latest edition of EmmaScript 6. However, there are quite a few promise libraries out there, such as Q, which implement it as well. I'm just going to work with the native uh, promise library. So, what I'm going to do is take you to kind of use, just to show you that this is not supported in a lot of, browsers, well, not a lot, but mainly e, um, IE browsers. So I'm using Google Chrome, which does support the new Promise API in EmmaScript 6, so I'm all right. But if you're going to go into production with them, then I probably still would use a Promise library such as Q uh, to make sure you've got full browser support. And you can find that on GitHub, and you can read about it here. So I'll leave a link to this down below if you want to check it out. Like I say, I'm just going to use the native Promise API that was uh, introduced in EmmaScript 6. So let's make a simple promise. The first thing you're going to notice on this page right here is this scary code right here, but don't pay too much attention to it yet. It's just a simple function called get, which takes in a URL and it's going to go out and it's going to grab some data using an XML HTTP request object. Okay. And we saw how to do that in one of the first tutorials, but don't worry, I'm going to go through all this in a few minutes. For now, what I want to do is create a variable. I'm con uh, going to call this promise. And I'm going to set this equal to this function, get, which is just going to go out and grab some data, right? And it's going to go out and it's going to grab the data, which is in the data folder forward slash tweets.json. Okay, so when we call this function, what it does is return a promise to us. You can see right there, it returns a new promise. So right now, this is a promise, and that's returned to us straight away before this data is brought back to us, okay? So I said that a promise is a placeholder object in which we can register our callbacks for success or failure. So we can do that now on this promise. We can say promise dot then, and then put a callback function in here, which is gonna take the data, we'll call the data tweets. And then in there, we can do something with those tweets. I'll just log them to the console. So console.log tweets. And if I refresh this now, we're going to see hopefully these tweets right there, that object. Cool. So what's happening? Well, when we set this variable promise equal to this get request, it's returning a new promise to us. And that promise is a placeholder for something that will happen in the future, right? And the thing that's going to happen in the future is that we're going to grab this data and it's going to be returned to us. Okay, so what we're saying is, okay, well, once that promise has been fulfilled, once that data has returned to us and everything's okay, we use the then method to say, then I want you to do this function, which is going to log the tweets to the console, right? And um, we can also prepare our error handler as well by using the catch method. So we'll say catch, and we can just chain this on to the end of the then method. So we'll say catch. And if there's an error, we can pass through a callback function with that error, okay? And we can log that to the console as well. So I could say console.log the error, okay? And if, for example, I spell this incorrectly, so put an extra E in, then save it, we're gonna see this error right here, not found. And we're getting that get error, 404 error right there, okay? So pretty cool. Now, you might be thinking, well, okay, why is this so much better than using just regular callbacks? Because after all, this is just a callback function, right? Well, the real beauty of this is when we start to make multiple asynchronous requests, because we can just chain them together. So, 
what I could do in this first callback function is return another promise. I could just return another get request like that. And then inside there, what I'm going to do is say data forward slash friends.json. So as soon as this promise is fulfilled and we fire this then method and the callback function right here, once that's done, we're going to log those tweets to the console and then we're going to return another promise, which is a get request for the friends.json right here. Okay, so we're returning that and then therefore this is now a promise for this. Okay, makes sense. So now we can use dot then again and inside that we can do our other callback function and we can pass through the friends and within that callback function we can say console.log friends if we can spell it correctly. F-R-I-E, there we go. Okay, so if we save that now, we're going to see both of those log to the console. First the tweets, then the friends. And again, if we want to get some more data, we can say return and then get. This time we're going to say data forward slash videos dot JSON. And that's going to return to us another promise. So therefore, we can use dot then again once it has that data. And we can pass through another callback function like so and pass through the videos. And in this callback function, we can log those to the console, like so, okay? So if we press save, we get all three of them. And this looks a lot nicer than all of those nested callbacks and different functions. This is a much more elegant way of dealing with those callbacks, I think. So when we create this variable promise and we set it equal to this get request right here which is this thing right here we know that it's returning a promise okay and anything with that promise interface has the dot then method available to it and the dot catch method available which is why we can do all this because we're being returned a promise to this variable so i just want to go through what we're doing here and how we're returning this promise so this function get takes in a URL, which is just the data we want to collect right there. And then what we're doing is returning a new promise object right there. And this promise takes a function. And in this function, there are two parameters, resolve and reject. So resolve is what happens when the promise is resolved, when it's a success, if you like. And reject is what happens when the promise is rejected and it's an error, if you like, okay? So within this promise, what we're doing, first of all, you've seen this in previous tutorials, we're creating a variable called XHTTP, and we're setting that equal to a new XML HTTP request. Then we're using the open method on that. We're saying we want to make a get request to the URL provided, which was passed through to this function. And we're saying true for asynchronous, right? Then what we're doing is saying down here, we want to send that, but up here we have these two methods, on load and on error. And basically, if your browser supports the promise interface, uh, then it's going to support this method, not this method, sorry, this on load method and this on error method as well. So we don't have to worry about that um, on state change, on ready state change stuff, right? So what we can say is dot on load, when this data has loaded, we set that equal to a function. We're going to check that the status is equal to 200, make sure that it's been found, and then we're going to resolve that data by passing it, first of all, and getting the response from the H, uh, the XHTTP object, right? So we're calling the resolve method when it's successful. If it doesn't equal 200, then we're calling the reject method, and we're passing through the status text of this object as well. Okay, so we're either resolving the promise or rejecting the promise based on whether it's a success, if you like. Okay, then down here, we're saying on error, if it can't be loaded for any other reason, then we're going to reject it as well. And we're also going to pass through that x dot, uh, that x HTTP dot status text. Okay, so we're rejecting here and we're rejecting here based on these conditions. And we're resolving here if everything is fine. Okay, so when we have this resolve method, then the dot then method can apply and we can access that data. When we have the reject uh, function right there, then the dot catch method applies and we get the error right there. All right. So that is how we make a promise. And that is how we use the promise interface, if you like. Now, 
jQuery also comes with a promise interface these days. So I'm just going to quickly show you how we deal with promises like that as well, because it kind of abstracts all this kind of stuff out, if you like. I just wanted to show you this so you've got some kind of background knowledge on it and you understand what the, uh, the inner workings are like. But if we comment all of this junk out for a minute, like so, then what I'm going to do is show you the jQuery way. So we can use jQuery.get to go and get some data. We know that already. And then in here, we're going to say what data we want. So that's data forward slash tweets.json. Yeah. And then instead of passing through a callback function right here, as we normally would, we can say dot then because this now returns to us the promise interface and anything with the promise interface can use the dot then method. Right. So we can use the dot then method on this and we can put our callback function in here and we can pass through the tweets and then in here we can console dot log those tweets much like we did in the other example like so so if we refresh we're going to see those tweets log to the console and again we can return the same thing we can return this a promise interface so that we can call the next method again so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to say return and I'm going to do another one of those. This time it's friends.json. And what I'm going to do is then say dot next because this has returned us a promise to this, right? So now we have another promise which we can call dot next dot. No, sorry, not dot next. I keep getting those mixed up for some reason. Dot then. Okay? If we can spell it. And then inside this uh, dot then method, we can pass through our second callback, which is going to take those friends. And within that function, we can console.log those friends and we can see those over here now. OK, and finally, we can return yet another promise, which is going to be the videos. And then we can use another dot then method, pop our callback function inside with those videos and within that function we can log them to the console like so and voila bob's your uncle we've got all three logged to the console right there tweets friends and videos so if you compare this to the callback method that we used in the last tutorial where it was all over the show we had callback hell etc this looks a lot better it abstracts a lot of this stuff out first of all and it also looks neater and it looks like synchronous code one after the other if you like but uh yeah that is the promise interface and that's why it's so good it just looks a lot better and it's much easier to maintain so any questions feel free to uh, leave a comment down below otherwise guys i'm going to see you in the very next tutorial where i'm going to talk about generators